What's up, everybody? Welcome to another program with the Chicago Public Library Teen Services and John Walt Foundation. We have music production one-on-one -on -one with Day Day Pivot. Day Day will be answering questions at the end of this workshop. So please take advantage of the Q&A and have fun. What's up? Uh, I'm Day Day, Day Day Pivot, Pivot Gang. Uh, we're here with the John Wall Foundation doing a music production workshop. Yay! This is when I do the trigger clap sounds of the audience. Yay! Clever clapping. Don't care. I'm going to talk about a bunch of different music production things. I'm going to try to not talk too fast, but we only have an hour. If anyone has questions, I'm going to even try to talk slower now because I bet that we're waiting. Gradually, people are joining right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you're here, if you just got here, my name is Day-Day, Day-Day Pivot. Uh, we're here with the John Wall Foundation doing It's Wall Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Um, I'm going to talk about some music production stuff. I'm going to talk about some structuring. I'm going to talk about sound choices and choosing sounds and a little bit of mixing stuff. I'm going to keep everything pretty basic and pretty um, like level. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to get too crazy because I want to make sure that we cover a bunch of stuff. But um, yeah. Oh, damn. I was going to put this in my, uh, in my bios and I didn't do that. Um, my bad. I'm not going to do that now, but if you're, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully people are seeing this link on Twitter and stuff like that. Someone just asked, can we sit with y'all yet? The answer is expeditiously. No, you cannot. Um, <laughs> there's no seats available. Um, but if anyone got any questions, write them down and save them until like, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to answer some questions in the last like 10, 15 minutes. So just to start off with talking about just like making beats and stuff like that. Um, I think that a lot of people have a lot of different ways of thinking about stuff. And even, even to talk about like management and stuff like that, I think that early on as a producer, it's easy to think that you're not getting anywhere and you need a manager or you need someone to help you get to where you need to be. Or you, 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 you like think in your head that you need to rely on someone else to get you to do the things that you need to get to and stuff like that. But really you don't need to do that. You don't need to rely on anyone else. It's best to like build with your friends and build with other people that are really invested in this as much as you are and that are on like a level that you're on. So with me, I did that with, um, with let mode, a big, a really good friend of mine that we had, we had a producer duo together and we just made beats together all the time. No one was hearing anything that we were doing. We would put it out. We would release mixtapes. We would do all this stuff. And a great way to get out there is just to be out there, like go to shows, meet people. We worked with, Lizzo uh, back there, back then. That was the first person we had a song with was Lizzo, her group called Girl Party in like 2013 or something, 2012. And we went from there building. We moved into Chicago. We met Saba um, and everything kind of just continued from there. But just working, I think this is a big, this is something I wanted to start with because I think this is like a big, uh, a big thing that I think a lot of producers uh, think too much about in their heads sometimes. And they want to like find people always be sending me music. Like, can you listen to my music? Can you do this? Can you do this? Like, I'm not going to, I know that people like look up, look up to me and stuff. And I appreciate that. I really appreciate it. It's, it's big things. And I try to give people their feedback. Maybe I should have closed the window. Cause that motorcycle is loud. Um, but like, I'm not going to change your life. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to assign you to anything. Like me giving you feedback isn't going to change anything. You got to be, people got to be really open with, uh, damn, I low key, I'm about to close this window. Hold on. I think you got to be really open. Basically what I'm going for it. You got to be really open with yourself and really open to criticism. A lot of people are scared of being told that something they did isn't tight or, um, I, and for me, that's kind of like being scared of getting better. You know what I'm saying? If you want to get better at something, you have to like tell yourself that something is bad about it and fix it. You have to learn how to learn. You have to learn how to unlearn. There's things that you think are tight 
that doesn't necessarily mean that other people are going to think they're that site. And that's not to say that like you should let go of yourself or let go of your own likes and dislikes. You should definitely keep these things, but there's like a middle ground. And this leads me to my next thing I was going to say, which is you are not your idea. If you have a really cool idea that you think is really dope and then someone you look up to, like, uh, let's say I show some to Saba and I think this beat is really tight. I think like overall, I'm like, damn, this is really cool. And he's like, man, like, I don't like this hi hat. You've changed the hi hat. There's some different things I could do here. I could be like, nah, I'm angry now because my I thought that hi hat was tight and Saba thinks it's bad. That would be stupid because, like, what's the point of that? Like, what's the point of like getting stuck in your head and being stuck on like this is what I'm talking about your own likes and dislikes and stuff. Sometimes you gotta you gotta be able to switch between the objectivity and the subjectivity because like if you want to get better and you want to learn it's really important to learn a lot. You're at the end of the day, you're not necessarily just making music for yourself. If you really want to do this, you're making music for people in general. And a lot of those people just listen to music and everyone has their own subjective opinion about music. So like learning about that a lot and opening up to um, constructive criticism and being ready to be like, okay, maybe I'm wrong or maybe someone else could see this this way. Or maybe I should try this like this. Or maybe I should try this like this is a really cool thing to, uh, work on i think for producers in general um all right let's talk about some like sounds let's talk about some sounds and stuff um well, something that i do a lot everyone can see my screen right now we're all good with this everyone can see my screen um what was the first production machine you used is people still asking questions i'm gonna wait till the end to answer these questions um all right something that i really like to do that helps a lot and this is something that i'm just going to talk about some things that i do as a producer and you guys can like take that how you want um, I like to make my own folders. If you look over here, I got all these folders, dude. I got so much. If I open this, I got even more. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? Like so much stuff. But if you take, if you have like 800 folders of drums, you've downloaded, you got the Timbaland kits, you got the boy wonder kits and you go through, you spend some time every day or every week or once a week or whatever, pick some of your favorites. How do you pick some of your favorites? You got to spend a lot of time listening to music, a lot of time making music. You got to make shit over and over. They say, what's that thing they say where it's like, uh, you got to put in your 10,000 hours or whatever. You got to like really get this shit down. Like time, time takes a long time. You know what I'm saying? To get to the point where you really uh, can do this naturally without having to think about it as much. And you, I know that it's like something you really want. You have to like take your time to get there. You have to be patient. You know what I'm saying? Being patient is hard, but... So, um, I think taking a lot of those sounds and making it smaller for yourself and whittling it down is important. So I have folders like Albert in here. I have all my shit in here that I like to use. I got Sharon. Sharon has even more of them in here. Sharon, you know what I'm saying? Sharon, this is, I remember them too. This one is like a different beats I made. I have like Bruble. There was a beat I made. I have like an exported percussion loop from that. I have another one. I have another one. Churs. I got a little drum loop and I'll take these and I'll like recut them up. Drum loop. And this is really important because you can take these and something that I, I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep showing you what I do with these type of things. Um, if anyone uses Ableton, I mean, obviously using Ableton right now. So, uh, something that I do a lot that, let me do that. Something that I do a lot is using the simpler, dragging the simpler, and you can just drop stuff in there and just re-chop it. So the reason I do this is because I have all this stuff right here. I already used this in a beat, but I didn't use that in a beat. You know what I'm saying? I used, bleep, 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 bleep. I used the original. You can take the things that you made already and re-chop them and re-chop them again. It's like Drum Inception. We're making a movie with Leonardo DiCaprio right now. I'll tell you one thing. Drum Inception, I'll tell you one thing. You can take this stuff and you can resample yourself. It's crazy. It's crazy. I know you didn't think of it, but I, I, I gave it to you now. I'll tell you one thing. You just take these and you resample them. Look at all these things I got, dude. Dude, they're just... Psh, psh. You could throw that in the background. Be, that's something that I really... That people always tell me is like a thing I do. In my, damn, I'm talking so fast. I only got a certain amount of time. That's something people always tell me I do in my beats really well. I have like a lot of... Um, I'll put like background stuff that like fills up the space. There's another thing. I'll get to that other thing in a sec, but taking these and just resampling them and doing all kinds of stuff like that. That was blah, 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 blah. 
I can turn that into something else. You know what I'm saying? Turn it up. Now I got that. Now I got that. Put that in the background of a beat, throw it halftime on it. You got to, you got to slow it down again. You recently, you know what I'm saying? You can do all kinds of stuff with this. Um, so I got a bunch of folders like this. So going back into my folder, here's even more new staring. I got another one. I got hi hat loops. Cool thing with hi hat loops that I like to do is I obviously used one hat for this, but I did some rolls and stuff. So by the way, what I'm using over here is the Ableton push. I like to use this to chop sounds. So right now it's chopped on all these, but if you go through, find the, find the rolls and stuff, I can change the pattern entirely. So you know what I'm saying? There's a new pattern. There's more rolls. That's a cool one. It's like a little double roll. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever, you know what I'm saying? So it's really nice to take things like that. Already good. I already knew, I already know that I chose a good hi-hat sound with this. You know what I'm saying? That's why I saved it. I don't have to look through a bunch of sounds. I don't have to be like, I'm nervous. I'm in the studio. Oh, I'm not finding tight sounds. I already have them all. They're right there. Just pick one. You know what I'm saying? Throw some shit in, fuck around. That leads me to the next thing I was going to say before I keep talking about drum kits. Um, trusting yourself and trusting the process. Once you just put in the time, to get to the point where you've, it takes a long time. Time takes a long time. But once you've put in some of this time, you can really trust yourself because you've put in so much time working on music that like naturally, without even having to think about it, you know that you're going to make tight choices. Whatever you're going to do, you're not going to let it be whack. So a lot of time when I make beats, and I'll get to talking about this Kehlani track right here, it's very, it's pretty natural because like, I don't really think about it when I end up making Mortal Kombat or death row or anything like it doesn't start with me being like, Oh, I'm going to make like, like I'm going to do this. That's not really what I'm doing. Like I feel like there's a lot of people that do that. I just like do whatever. And I trust that me being me is going to hear things. And this is going to make me think of this. And this is going to make me think of this. And I'm going to lead myself to this whole thing. And I've been at, I've been uh, working with, working with Dawood for a long time. Um, we make care for me together and we do this all the time together. He does all the piano and all, not even just, just sounds that aren't drums. And I make all the drums and we just make these whole tracks, like trusting each other all the time. So trusting the process, very important. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm jumping around here, but let's get back to these drum kits. So I got a bunch of drum kits I've made over here. Um, going back to what I was talking about with uh, organizing sounds like going through Boy Wanda Kiss, going through all these kits and picking your favorites. It's also cool to record sounds, recording your own sounds and making your own sounds. You can do this with a little Zoom recorder. You can do this with a microphone, walk around. Um, you, there's some that plug into your phone. You can walk around with your computer. You can also do it with an iPhone. These have really good compressors and they sound really good. You can like do stuff with these that, um, like, it usually sounds tight. Like I've recorded a lot of stuff with these, uh, but I'll go through some of this. So right here I have, um, this is the first, I think this is the first drum kit I recorded. So here's my belt. It's just me messing around my belt. Like that is in life. That beep is whatever. You, that beeps in song life. Um, some weird blip sound. These are me hitting, uh, I think I was hitting like a beer bottle, like a Heineken bottle. It's like a, also think about what you're hitting it with. Like if you hit a Heineken bottle with a triangle beater, which is made of metal, so you're hitting metal in the glass, it's going to sound different than if you hit a, a beer bottle with a pencil, you know what I'm saying? Which is going to sound different than if you hit a beer bottle with the eraser of a pencil. Damn, crazy. We're going crazy now. This is drum inception all over again. I'll tell you one thing. So let's go down through these. I got these bottles, bottle cap dropping on the ground. Kibasa, clicking the kibasa, you know what I'm saying? A little longer thing. Kibasa rolls, damn crazy, dude. We got the weird, you know what I'm saying? We got the weird rhythm. We got the chopstick dropping, dude. That, that, that's nice. Hella clicks, dude. I love clicks. Fire. Look at all these clicks. Ready? Game changer. Come on now, damn crazy. We got the index card. Index cards, you know what I'm saying? A rip thing. 
This is me hitting a radiator with like the wooden part of a mallet or something. Like fucking around. You know what I'm saying? All these things. This is just one. This is my mouth. Mouth sounds. Pencils clicking. Like this shit is great. And what I usually do with stuff like this um, is I'll go into a drum rack. And this is all those, all those, going back to what I was just talking about, a lot of those drum, ro- drum loops came from me doing this. I drag a drum rack in. Sometimes I'll do this faster than other times. Sometimes I'll like really think about it and pick sounds out. Like specifically, sometimes I'll just drag them in. I've like overused Albert. This is my Albert sounds. Um, so I don't really use these ones as much anymore, but I'll just like take a bunch of sounds like randomly. Uh, sometimes I don't even click on them. I get some of those, get some clicks, get some kibasa sound. You know what I'm saying? Maybe throw that kibasa sound over there. I don't know, like an index card, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Let's get some of these, uh, get some of these little clicky things. Sounds cool. Uh, what else we got? We got the mouse sounds. You know what I'm saying? We'll get, get that in there. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. A little pop. A little pop sound. Come on now. Got the radiator. Oh, we got the... Come on now. We got the radiator click. A little snare click, dude. I don't even know, dude. You know what I'm saying? We're just, drag, we're just, we're just dragging in, dude. I don't even care. A little tongue? A little tongue sound, dude? Come on now. Dude, the rapper, and this one keeps going too. This one's gonna be in the back as I hit it. It's gonna just ring out. We got the zipper to my pants. You know what I'm saying? Mad sexy, big sexy man. All right, so now I got all these on here. And I come over here, my guy. We got all this over here. You know what I'm saying? Set up on the thing. Um, I'll probably just throw like a saturator on here or something, so it's just a little bit louder because a lot of these sounds are kind of quiet. That's way too loud. <laughs> Whoops. Um, so I'll just do stuff with this. Like you gotta, you kind. I mean, I don't do this once I I drag them in randomly. But once I have them in, I figure out what's there and I work with what's there to make cool rhythms going with each other. Some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. But um, like you know, what I'm saying. And you can also cool thing about Ableton Push too is you can. Um, can you see this? There's a button over here called repeat. I hit this button and then there's all these um, like rhythms I can do. You can do eighth notes. Just hold it down. Triplets, eighth note triplets, 16th notes, 15th note triplets, 30 seconds, 30 second note triplets. So something I'll do sometimes too is I'll like switch between the repeat buttons. Now I'll put the mic down for a sec and you can like just turn it on and off kind of and do crazy stuff. If you use one hand, you can like that's that's pretty fun. Um, anyway, uh, oh, whoops, I'm not supposed to be cursing. Ooh, my bad. Sorry, I'm a 31 year old man. That, as a potty mouth, dude. Um, all right, let me get back to what I was talking about. You open my note real quick. 320. We got time, dude. We got time, dude. Um, where was I just at? The drum folders. All right, so this is Albert. This is just one. This is the first one that I made. Um, shut up. This is the first one that I made. This is Albert. Um, I made this like in my apartment, I think, with like I think I might have used a Zoom for this, a Zoom recorder. I don't even remember. I might have just used my phone. I don't know. And then I made Buford. There's another one. Hella sounds again. I got cassette tapes in this one. I used a lot of Albert um, on Care For Me. So I tried to, and I and a lot of other stuff I made around then. So I try to like make more of these so that I have more to work with because I don't, like I keep using the same things. Like it, you can reuse, like I was talking about with the resampling of stuff. You can reuse the same things in different ways, but eventually it's like the way that your mind like, I know I've used these, so I'm going to be like, eh, like, it makes me feel whack. Like, I don't really want to do that, you know what I'm saying? Bongo. Weird click. I don't even know what that was, but this sounds awesome. Wherever that is, it's tight. You can take that. It's got the, see, it's got three. It's got three transients. Transient means attack, by the way. So when I say this has three transients, it's got one right there, one right there, one right there. So this is cool because that just sounds cool. You throw a snare, you got to... You got a snare, you throw that over the snare, boom, dip, 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 dip. you know what I'm saying? That sounds tight, dude. We got bongo. 
that cassette zippy thing, you know what I'm saying? Like what? Sound of me hitting a chair. Chairable chair rhythm, dude, going crazy with the chair rhythm, dude. Oh, dude, come on, man. Well, chair roll. Chapstick rolling along the floor. This is just a hi-hat that I found and, like, saved. We got the clickies again, dude. How many clickies we got this? Come on, man. Are you ready? Dude, clickies for days, dude. I'll tell you one thing. This one's tight. I'll throw this on snares sometimes. I actually use this as a snare once. Dude, fire, dude. Come on now, dude. If you record these, what I'll do is I'll make like a really long recording and just like chop it up. So you take like half an hour or something, you like chop it all up, separate it all into different tracks. I'll like boost them all and turn them up, uh, put like saturators on them. I'll usually, a lot of time when you record into a phone or you record into like a Zoom or even like a, well, if you have a good mic, it doesn't happen as much, I guess. But a lot of times there's a lot of bass. There's just like bass frequencies. So if I, um, to talk about that for someone who maybe doesn't know what the fuck I'm talking, who doesn't know what the, uh, uh, what the hell I'm, what the heck I'm talking about. Um, uh, this is an EQ I really like to use the fab filter pro Q. And a lot of the time when you record stuff into a phone, a sound like this might have a lot of bass on it right now. It doesn't cause I fixed it already. But if you look down here, this is already loud cause I already boosted it. That's not as loud, but you know what I'm saying? You don't want to make this peak. Sounds good. Now it's even more boosted because of the saturator right there. But you see how there's all this bass right here? How do I... I can't... I don't got three hands. So if I hit this, we got a bass down there. Before, when I recorded it, I think it was like boosted right here. It was like a bunch of bass. So if you want to do stuff like this, you can just drag it down, put a low cut on it. No more bass. You can't really hear it. Excuse me. You can't really hear that that bass is there for real. But if you're making a track, people always ask me, like, how do you get your stuff to sound so good? Like, how do you mix your stuff so well or stuff like that? It's a lot simpler than people think it is, I think. Like, mixing stuff is thinking about how to get stuff out of the way that doesn't need to be there sometimes and that you maybe don't notice. So if I have, like, a bunch of these sounds and I didn't do what I just did, where I simply just low cut the bass out, all that's going to add up on top of each other and it's going to be conflicting with the 808. And with the 808, a lot of the time you can bring the highs off unless you're using like a like a fuzzy 808 or something. You can do that. Like with the hi hats, drop the lows like even higher up. Probably you know what I'm saying around 500, something like that. Like um, by the number I'm talking about is right there. By the way, like hi hats, you don't need that much mid in hi hats, depending on what kind of hi hat you're using. Um, if I'm using this one, this is like all highs. Dude. Let me drag this down here. If I'm using this one. You don't need anything below like 200 or something, dude. Like this is all, this is all here. It's all up in the thousands, dude. If I go up here, up to 10 grand, shit still damn near sounds the same. <laughs> like you don't want to get rid of all this because it's going to be really thin, but you definitely, you can see down here, there's bass down here. You see that? You don't need any of that on this hi-hat. You don't need any of that and you can't hear it, but it's there. And if you get rid of it, it really helps a lot. These like little things help with uh, making tracks sound a lot better. Cool. So, you know what I'm saying? We're talking about making sounds. We're talking about picking sounds. This is Buford. That's my second one. I think I made a couple more. I made ones with my interns. I made one with Burlo and I made one with Jacob. Sharon. Sharon's just... But then I also do stuff like this where I export sounds from beats. So like here's more. That's what I was talking about earlier. Like loops and stuff. Um... Steven, maybe that was another one. No, it's more sounds from beats. These are like my hi hats and stuff that I made. Make your own sounds, rename them. I'll do that sometimes too. I go in and I like layer a bunch of hi hats, make it sound really cool. Turn it up. That's a good. That's a hi tight hi hat. Day hi hat one, dude. Come on now. Day hi hat two. Sounds good. Eight oh eight. Come on now. We got the. We got the. We're ready to go. We're ready to go. I'll tell you one thing. Stanley, what does Stanley got? Oh, Stanley was the next one I did. Oof. Good champagne. Come on now. That. Whoa, yo. Okay, so this. I obviously didn't fix this well enough. Door closing. Where's the... Um, let me pull this over. This shit got... This stuff got bass in it. Look at all that bass, dude. Look at that. Huge vibes, dude. That is way... I don't need that much bass because if I do this... Oh, dude, it's so much cleaner. That is going to interfere with the kick. That's going to interfere with the 808. 
We don't need none of that shit. I mean, stuff. I'll tell you one thing. God, I gotta stop cursing. All right. So, as we continue, um, some more things that you can use to mix. Uh, people ask me about this a lot. I will say, again, what I was just saying, a lot of mixing is EQing, like I was just talking about, compressing, um, saturation, stuff like that. But uh, leveling is really important, like figuring out what you want to be louder, what you want to be softer, and sometimes picking a sound in the beat that you want to be the focal point or the focus is important. Usually that's obviously going to be a chord sound or a melody or something like that. Um, once you also, have to, you also want to think that we are producers. We do usually start out making a lot of this stuff without rappers. Years later, you get to the point where you're working with rappers. And it's important to think about that there will eventually be vocals on this. So do you have too many sounds going on? If you're putting in, if I'm doing these percussion, background percussion layers and stuff, is it too loud? Is it getting in the way? A lot of vocals are, if I open this up again, a lot of vocals are mainly in the mid area and the highs and stuff. Um, you don't, you wouldn't want to glow cut a vocal like this. So it's not really thin, but um, you don't want to have to, well, sometimes when I'm mixing my snares, I'll drop them a little bit right here. You know what I'm saying? I might do a little bit of that. Maybe just like a, like a little bit goes a long way. You don't need to do too much. It's not great to be adding stuff a lot with these. Try to avoid that as much as you can. Um, it's best to just drop stuff. Like let's say I want to add something right here. I could also just drop something over here. I do add stuff though. A lot of time I'll take my eye ads and I'll, I'll cut below like 500 or whatever, 200 and I'll boost a little bit up here. It's not terrible to do these things. There's a lot of like rules that people talk about where it's like, you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do this. It doesn't really matter. You're not really not supposed to do anything. If you, if it sounds cool, then like whatever, like I don't really care. Uh, a lot of time I'd be to like be super peaking and if it sounds okay, then it's fine. A lot of time peaking doesn't sound okay. So you got to kind of bring everything down. If it's at levels where you like it, if you really like how the 808s loud and everything louder than everything, you can bring everything down 60 B or however much it's peaking. Um, and then the 808, the levels of everything will all still be the same the way you want everything to be uh, comparing to each other. Uh, things to think about, you know what I'm saying? Um, we're in Ableton. Some Ableton plugins that I use a lot are the saturator, really simple way to turn things up and make it sound a little bit stronger. Uh, you see, I just threw it on there down here and just turned all this stuff up like really simply. Uh, you could the Ableton EQ is good. You don't have to have the pro like these cool plugins, the Pro Q and stuff. Like you don't have to have these. Ableton EQ is fine. You can drop stuff, you know what I'm saying? You can go down here, you can throw a really strong low cut on there. Like you can do all this stuff with these. Ableton comes with a lot of really good, um, really well-made plugins. The drum bus is really cool. Also, side note for anyone who uses Ableton, great way to find things. This is something that I used to use Fruity Loops. I used Fruity, I made Care For Me on Fruity Loops. Um, Fruity Loops 11. I love Fruity Loops. I never wanted to abandon Fruity Loops. Or I didn't abandon it, but I never wanted to betray Fruity Loops, dude. I felt so bad. I was like, I'm betraying Fruity Loops. Fruity Loops my OG, dude. And um, coming in Ableton was cool because there's things that you can do in Ableton that you can't really do as easily in Fruity Loops. For example, this. You can just search stuff. I just searched drum bus and pressed Command F and there's the drum bus. I don't have to go in over here and go to audio effects and go down and there's the drum bus. I didn't have to add that extra five seconds to what I was doing. I can literally just go up here, drum bus. There it is. If I want to find the sound of like, I don't even know, like a dog. I can type in dog. There's a dog. <laughs> like, what? like I just found somewhere in my sounds. That was a cool sound. Somewhere in my sounds, I have dogs. I didn't have to look to figure out where they were like I would in free loops where I would spend literally like 10 minutes sometimes being like, where do I have a dog sound? I just searched it. That's one cool thing about Ableton. The simpler is really cool way to chop things really fast. The drummer acts really cool. Ableton also has this thing where you can do stuff. Um, so right here, I got this, what is this hi hat? You can do stuff. I think free loops has this too. Um, but I never knew it was in free. Loops. The only reason I think free loops has this is because I saw a boy wanted to talk about how, there's a thing in Fruity Loops where like uh, it like records everything you have and you can like get stuff that you missed or whatever. And I didn't know that you could do that. In Ableton, you can definitely do it. If I'm going like this, whatever, whatever. You hit this button right here, MIDI capture up at the top. It's a little square thing with no sides. 
And uh, there's the thing. I just did. Uh, I can't see. Uh, where's the solo button? Good. Uh, there. Okay. There's the thing I just did. Oh, I stole the wrong thing. It just records. It, it's not recording, but it like gets what you did. It like has what you did already. So that's a really cool thing about Ableton too. There's just a lot of things about the workflow in Ableton that are really simple and that make production like really fast. Fruity Loops is really cool in a lot of ways because in Fruity Loops you can um, writing it, writing in stuff in Ableton isn't as easy. So if I go in here and I want to write stuff, I have to like double click. You can make it not double click over here. You can um, you can press that. You can just like write stuff in like in Fruity Loops. Uh, but it's like so different. It's just a really different process. It's way slower. If I'm dragging stuff, it like locks into the next one like that, which you can, all these things you can turn off and stuff like that and turn on and whatever. But Fruity Loops is just set up like already to be ready for me to just do, I'm just going to write in these things and write in these roles. And the piano roll is really nice. Um, I would open Fruity Loops right now, but I don't want my computer to like over uh, work itself and mess up this Zoom. Um, the piano roll is really cool in Fruity Loops, especially at the bottom. You can just like pan notes right and left. You can't do that in Ableton. I mean, you can if you go over here. Um, you can just like go to track panning and you can pan stuff, but this like literally pans like the actual like panning. Fruity Loops has its own separate thing for uh, doing all that stuff. So I, I don't know. A lot of good things about these different programs. I really like Ableton at this moment, but um, they're both dope. So let's go and talk about... Um, Let's talk about a track and talk about some structuring and stuff like this and how to just make a beat. Um, let me get this out of my way. So this is, uh, I have a song with Kehlani called RPG featuring Black. Um, and this is a beat that I made in like seven minutes. I made this like really fast. And this is an example of like trusting the process. If you're having fun, like, and you've been working on this for a really long time, you probably know what you're doing subconsciously without even having to think about it and can just like do stuff because you know what sounds good and you know what doesn't sound good. So you can just like do stuff and make it sound cool. With this, I was um, just in the studio with Select Mode and I think maybe Saba was there. I don't remember. We were just in the studio in Chicago and we were all like, I think we were all just like hanging out, having fun. I think it was after like maybe on the beach or something and everyone was like talking and like not paying attention. I was just like messing around and I remember I made this little chord progression. That's it. Vibes are ready. It's just an Omnisphere sound. If anyone's looking for sounds, um, this is Omnisphere. My computer is overloading a little bit. Am I still here? Can you still see me? Am I still moving? Yep. No one's texted me that anything's gone wrong, so it looks like I'm still good. Um, this is an Omnisphere sound. Uh, called Far Far Away Retro Piano. I don't even think I did that much to it. I might have like pulled down some of the release or something, but really nice sound. Um, good already. This is already a vibe. Whoops. So, started with that. I don't always start with chords. Um, in fact, a lot of the time I start with drums. When I'm making stuff with Dawood, I just like make drums. And with, with Let Mode too, I'll just make some drums and then they'll make like some chords or they'll make some other stuff that's like cool. And it's really easy to do stuff like that. Or if I have, I Let Mode sends me samples, I'll reach out the sample and I'll maybe start with that or I'll make some drums and then I'll be like, hmm, I got some Let Mode samples. Let me throw it over this and see what it sounds like by itself. Let me throw it over this and see what it sounds like if I resample it and rechop it. I got some Dawood samples. Let me throw it over this. Let me start with the Dawood sample and chop it. I got some Saba samples. Let me chop up these Saba samples. Like there's all different kinds of ways you can make beats, whatever works for you at whatever time you want to do it. It doesn't have to be a specific way. It doesn't have to be done one way or another way. It's like, it's all good. Whatever you want to do at any moment. Today, I made a beat with Dawood where I just started making drums. Literally started with like a hi-hat. And it led to this whole beat that me and him made that was really tight. It's like, you just got, just coming back to just trusting the process. So right here, I got this piano. The next thing I did was I made the drums. Um, they're all separate right here. But originally, they was I'm just going to put these all together. Originally, this was all in one drum rack, and I separated them all like this. So that sounds like this. Whoa, that is the wrong tempo. How did that even just happen? Oh, you know what happened? I know what happened. There we go.
All right. Uh, when you record stuff and capture MIDI, it changes the tempo sometimes. All right. So this, I just played these drums in. Um, I think I did the hi-hats first. Sorry, that is still down there. Whoops. Simple. Drums. Sounds good. You know what I'm saying? Sounds good. Um, I think I played these hi-hats in first, which are like this. It's like two different hi-hats. One of them is playing the downbeat and the other one's playing the offbeat. So I was going like that. And then the other ones, I think I played these separately. I was going like that. You put them together. Oh my God. One hand. All right, there we go. Hi-hats, you know what I'm saying? Sound cool. All the drums together. I like doing, I don't know if you can hear me when I talk over that. I like doing offbeat um, kicks. I like one and it's really cool doing cool things like that. Um, there's like a line obviously between doing stuff that's going to be like too far left for someone to rav on where like originally when I was starting out to make beats, me and uh, Lev Mode would try some crazy stuff and like people can't always rap over that. So like, but going through the years of time where you try the crazy stuff is important. Like do whatever you're going to do, but know that you have to be open. Like I was saying at the beginning to unlearning and constructive criticism and being ready to work with other people. Cause at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do here. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to make music together. We're trying to make music for music listeners who don't know about music that much. They're not sitting down and being like, Oh, he did this. They're not doing that. Like when you go in the studio and you're like, let me play you some beats, man. And so I was like, cool, dude. And then you're like, all right, so this one, like, man, this one's cool because I did this. And then I, also, dude, nobody cares. Don't tell me what, I don't care. <laughs> like, that's cool that you did those things, but like, it's cool to you. Like these, you know what I'm saying? I'll sometimes do that, but like more with my friends. Um, but anyway, offbeat kick, really tight. You know what I'm saying? Really, really like that. No kick on the downbeat. Fire. So put that with the piano. Damn near already have the beat. Done. You know what I'm saying? Um, oh, I forgot to talk about this. Another thing I really like to do, uh, and I literally just use an Ableton sound, for, an Ableton uh, plugin for this, the compressor, the Ableton compressor. Um, you can use the Ableton compressor to sidechain. Sidechaining is basically... Um, when a sound hits, another sound drops out of the way. So right now I have the kick side chain to the piano. So every time the kick hits, the piano drops. So you can see it down here. I pull the what you do. Well, all you have to do is um, you load in a compressor. I can like undo all of it. You load in a compressor. It'll look like this. You click that. You go into side chain. You want to you want to use whatever. So I want to side chain the kick. So I go to the kick. Track three. Um, EQing is cool with the Ableton sidechain or with the Ableton compressor. You can like EQ, you can use, um, like, let's say I was, let's say all of these drums were on one track still. They were on like one thing. I can use this EQing to side, to use, to have the, only the kick be sidechaining to the piano. Um, or only the hi-hats. If I clicked that kick, hi-hats, you can also change the frequencies down here and how heavy it is. Um, and all you do then is just pull the threshold down change the ratios, makes it a little stronger. This is the attack and this is the release of it. This is how long it takes for it to come back up or like that or, you know what I'm saying, right away. So if we look at this now, you can see it dropping really heavily. Um, my computer is overworking right now, so it's hard to really see what's going on, but you can see that dropping right here. And you can hear it if you listen. Um, so right now, what we have is right sounds cool basically a beat already you know what i'm saying let's give it some more vibes shall we the next thing i did was this brings me back to one of these folders i was going to talk about i threw in this little guy let me turn this up so you can hear what i'm talking what it is fire dude this shit is tight send the vibes so now in the background I like to do stuff like this where you put a layer. It makes it feel like more real. It makes you feel like what you're doing. What like when you listen to the beat, it doesn't have like an emptiness in the background. This like one thing changes this beat entirely for me. 
like that was cool. I had the kick, the snare, the other snare, um, and the high ass and the main piano sounded good. It was already a vibe. Made that in like four minutes. Threw this on here, and now it's like this shit is like super a vibe. <laughs> It's just like in the back, you can barely hear it. But it sounds tight. And I did the bass, which is also simple. Uh, we can go over here and do that. Just one note. And I do the octaves thing. One cool thing to do with bass a lot is to change octaves. An octave is 12 half steps, if someone doesn't know what that means. So I played along with the whatever the chords were. I don't remember. I think these were like a A flat minor chord or something. I don't remember. Oh, it's a C, uh, C minor seven to an A f to a G minor seven. Yeah. Um, so I just like played along with the chords and you can see I played the C and then I dropped the octave and this go it really try to go with the kick went with the kick right here on the end. What and comes in drop to the go up the octave. Good stuff, you know what I'm saying? Over here, I did a little variant of the bass. Once you get over to the, um, like the second chorus or whatever. Use the five, go from the octave to the five. What I'm saying here is the scale degrees. So the fifth uh, of whatever key I'm in. So I was I was playing C, so the fifth would be a G. C, D, E, F, G. So I'm going C, G, C. Um, those are cool things to do when you're playing bass. So that's the basis of the song, you know what I'm saying? After that... Uh, I did a couple little extra thing. Actually, to be honest, down here, I had to change all this today because uh, this was overloading and I couldn't do the zoom at the same time. Right here, you can see I have 20... Or no, I just added this drum rack that wasn't even there. I have 24... Or no, I just added that too. 23 tracks and two of them are um, acapellas. So really, I have 21 tracks. There was 78. They had me make a bridge. They had me make all this. This song was like five and a half minutes long. They had me do all this extra. Her a &Rs had me working on all this stuff for a month. I worked on this song a lot. I made a whole bridge section that had this open, like cool stuff I could have showed you guys, but um, I had to get rid of it all to make this work. So I, I went from this beat, which was, what, like eight sounds. And it has these little like rolly sounds. There's like, a, like, this is like an extra hat. Real simple, like real subtle things that I'll add in to like fill it out. So in the chorus, this little extra hat comes in. I added the TikTok from uh, Life into this. Actually, that TikTok that comes in blip, 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 is right here. And I think this has like a pan man on it. Yeah, which makes it like go between the speakers. Which is cool. Uh, this is a sound toys plugin. Um, and that's nice. It's like in the background, you can like kind of hear it. It adds in some moving forward emo uh, motion, you know what I'm saying? But you don't really know it's there. A regular listener is not going to be like, oh, he did that. But you can like kind of hear it. I had these like little rolls that come in right here a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like real subtle things. Um, and then I sent it to let mode and he did some extra chords, some extra hi-hat roll stuff, uh, a little perky, little percussion sound in the back. It comes in. It sounds cool. That's a cool sound. He did a little, he did a couple of things. He did these strings that fill it out a lot. Um, and then I had made that bridge section and they wanted a little, uh, they were, they couldn't figure out how to end the song. So I was like, let me figure out how to end this song. I made this all this structure. I got this bass going harder at the end. And then I just had it cut into this little outro with these chords. Uh, so it's just the piano, but I added these extra little pads behind it. Same chords, but it's arpeggiating them in different ways. This is a different way to sing. Um, and this is layered with this little, like, other little patty thing. Mad nice, dude. The vibes, you know what I'm saying? So it, it just ends with her doing her little thing over that. Or maybe she didn't do anything with this. Number. This is like an old acapella, so I don't know. But. Um, I think I switched some stuff up for six or for what's his name for Black's verse. Make you think that I'm saying things because you probably. I don't know, but when you look back at this beat, originally what I did, like I was saying, was just this. This was the beat. When I sent her this beat, that was the beat. 
That was it. I had to, I had all this stuff because it's boring if it just stayed the same the whole time. So I did like subtle things. I didn't go too crazy. Um, you can see I labeled it up here. If you right click up here, you can add locators. Um, and you can like play it from these spots and stuff like that. This is the pre chorus. We got the chorus. Next verse. You know what I'm saying? We got back over here. So it's nice to like structure these things too. But I think some questions that I get sometimes from people is, um, should I, am I going to mix too much? Like, am I structuring too much? Like, you don't need to do a lot of this when you're making the beat. When you're making, like I was saying, when I made this beat, it took me like six minutes. I just made the beat. You don't want to distract yourself with mixing too much. You don't want to throw EQs on and be like, ah, I got to do, you don't have to do any of that. Just make it sound cool. If you want to drop some lows and stuff like that and try to remember, don't get stuck on it. And this is coming from someone who has diagnosed OCD. I take medication for OCD. <laughs> if I can do this, you can do it. You have to like move past these things. You got to get past yourself. So the focus is the vibe. The focus is creating something that sounds cool. Don't get stuck on EQing. Don't get stuck on structuring. Don't get stuck on any of these stupid things you don't really have to do yet. Like I said, I sent her this beat as a loop and it ended up being this whole song. Um, I wanted to have time to take questions here. We got like 13 minutes left. If anyone got any questions, you can start sending these questions in um, and I can start answering some. Uh, the last thing I was going to talk about, which I can jump to right now while you're sending in those questions. Um, and over here, you can see, like, I don't just have my drums folder. I got custom in here. I got a bunch of stuff. Saba made some, uh, like, MIDI things that we have where you can just drag these in. Um, and they're, like, 808s that we already use a lot. And they're ready to go, like, ready to use. Um, I got some cool ear can. I, I would save some, like, Omnisphere plugins that I like to throw in and just have ready already and stuff like that. Um, a lot of plugins in here. I had uh, Young Savoy. Um, one of my interns, he would, he made me like a lot of sound fonts and it was something I was having him learn and work on for himself too. Just like making sound fonts, just like making sounds. And he would just, he made me all these sounds. Like he got another folder right here. You know what I'm saying? Another folder right here. He made me all these sounds. Um, got all this stuff in here. But what I was about to show you is the situational ambience folder. This is huge. Burlo made me this actually, my, my other intern. Um, this is where, actually, this isn't where this atmospheric thing came from. This came from a different folder that I like. There's like, these will be in folders sometimes that you find. But look, I got all this people talking in different languages, ice rink, office. You could throw these things in the back, turn them down, make sure you EQ out the lows and you're like, good. All right. So we got a question from De December. Do you worry about copywriting music or how do you go about it? Have you ever been in a situation where someone took your sounds? Um, like, I guess you're talking about like, this is something that I would think about early on when making beats too. Copywriting like your beat and stuff um, or like putting tags over the whole beat and stuff like that is fair. But um, it kind of like ruins, it's kind of like if you're talking about like getting paid for music and stuff like that, you don't want to go in being someone who's trying to make music and trying to get into the music world being like, y'all got to pay me. Like you got to, you got to be a little... 50 50 with yourself with this too because you know you want to make money but you also know this is something that you want to do and enjoy and have fun with and be making friends and like working with your friends and building with your friends you don't need to get paid a hundred dollars up front on your first bt place and then have that relationship not turn into a real relationship and have you this person not be your real friend because you made them pay you that's whack like i've been working with Saba for six years i didn't i didn't ask for money like at all and now it's like, we're making money together. It's like, I, like I, this is just like how these things happen. You just gotta be a good person. Don't worry about these things with copywriting. I don't think you got to think about that as much with beats as I used to think you did. You can like send stuff into libraries and they'll copyright stuff for you, but you don't really have to do that. Cause, um, most of the time a rapper isn't, <laughs> a rapper isn't like savvy enough to figure out how to get your beat. If you send it in the right way, a lot of times, so if you send like make a private SoundCloud link and send the private SoundCloud link, how are they going to get it off the SoundCloud? Like, where are they going to do screen recorded or something? Like, they can't get the beat unless you send it to them and you're in the in an email. I wouldn't send a beat like in an email to someone that I don't really know for real. Probably just make a private SoundCloud link and send them that. You don't really have to copyright. You don't really have to cover it in tags. Try not to do things that like turn people off from wanting to work with you and stuff. Like, or wanting to be friends with you or build with you. Like, don't cover your beat in tags. Don't like make them try to pay you up front. If you're not on a level where people are going to pay you more than like a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks, like, don't worry about it. Like you want to make music, make music, dude. Don't worry about it. Um, from at moody booty. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, Dave. Would you suggest a program to use before upgrading to Ableton? Um, 
Not really. I mean, these, they all kind of do the same. Like I was saying earlier, they all are set up in different ways to do different things. So Fruity Loops is set up to auto, is rhythms, right in rhythms automatically. Piano roll, channel settings, ready to go. Like um, Ableton is set up to just really quickly record stuff. I can hit this and it's in there already. I can record stuff really quick. It's like set up really perfectly for stuff like that. Um, I wouldn't say that starting with another, if you can get one of these programs, it would be better. Logic is the cheapest one. Logic has really cool, um, like chordal sounds and mel- melodic sounds, which is cool. Um, so I would say maybe start with X is the cheapest. I think logic is like $200. Ableton's like 800, I think, or something. Um, I will say that I cracked these programs and I had them illegally for a long time. I'm not, I'm not condoning that or suggesting that to anyone, but that was what I had for a really long time. Um, I would say starting with these programs is the best. It's not that hard. Like you can learn everything from YouTube. You can learn everything from YouTube. Like when I was, I'm 31, when I was 20, YouTube was, was like becoming a thing. There wasn't Twitter as much. Like I don't even think, I don't even know if Twitter was a thing yet. I think it had just started or something. Like you can learn everything from YouTube. There's videos of how to learn all this stuff. Just if you want to start producing, you want to do this, get Ableton, get Free Loops, get Logic, go on YouTube, like learn stuff. Ask your friends. Let Mode taught me almost everything I know. Saba taught me a lot of stuff. I taught him a lot of stuff. Like you can learn from your friends too. From uh, Aaliyah, we have seen you play the keyboard. Do you play any other instruments? Um, Dawood's actually way better. He's a really good keyboardist. I'm just like, I can play keyboard. I can play like bass, um, uh, like key, key bass. I, I've been playing, learning instruments is really cool, like focusing on other things and having fun with all this stuff. Like I've been learning guitar. There's a guitar right there, but I can't get to it. I'm learning guitar um, for the last couple months, which has been really cool. I got calluses on my fingers now, which is really tight. I feel so accomplished, dude. I'm learning guitar. Um, yeah. So I'm learning guitar. I can also, I went to school for classical percussion. I went to Northwestern for classical percussion. So I can play xylophone, marimba, glockenspiel, bass drum, tambourine, triangle. I'm like a professional at every one of these instruments. Like I've practiced triangle for four hours a day, sometimes like tambourine for four. Like I would do these things for years. I I played in an orchestra in the civic orchestra for a while. Um, snare drum, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, all those things. So I can play a lot of instruments. Uh, but now at this point, I think all that kind of just goes into the knowledge that I have and I can like pick and choose and grab at things I already know. And like when Joe shows me a song and, uh, we can work on it, we can talk about it together and maybe try this, maybe try this, like stack your knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Learn instruments, learning instruments is cool. Strangest sound ever recorded. Uh, I've definitely like made beats out of my farts, <laughs> which is funny. Um, I don't know. You can do it. You can low key make anything out of anything. You can make. Last week I recorded a toilet seat at Christella's house, just like a the squeaking of the toilet seat, and just like you can make synths out of these things. You just drag them into the simpler, like I was talking about. And um, with the simpler, you can mess with all kinds of stuff. Do I have a simpler here anywhere? Are these drum racks? These are drum racks. Is this a simpler? No. I don't have a simple way. Right? I don't feel like doing it. But you can do all kinds of stuff in the simple where you can make, you can drag in like a fart, like a anything that has like a long sound and you can like isolate part of it and lengthen it um, and make it into like, you can hold out chords and stuff. Like you, it, it, everything is a waveform. Everything is just a way, every sound is a waveform. So you can take these things and stretch them and turn them into your own synths and stuff like that. So strange sounds are low-key cool. You can take a, you take a fart and you filter that fart, take off some of the highs, and it's on you know what I'm saying? You're good. You might have a cool synth. I'll tell you one thing. Throw some reverb on there. Ooh, I'll tell you one thing. A little tasty. Uh, Q from Foldback Beats. Did you ever get creative block or struggle finding inspiration? How do you deal? That sucks. Um, a lot of people talk about how this isn't real. Sometimes I go through stages of thinking this isn't real. I think that that's like kind of fair, but it's also like kind of unfair to say that. It's definitely real, but it's also like kind of in your head. Like for, Like just using this as an example, like I haven't been making beats as much for the last couple of weeks. Cause I, I mean, going in quarantine, I've been going in and out of sometimes working harder and sometimes not knowing what to do. I mean, the world's like falling apart. <laughs> so like sometimes there's no inspiration, but I get here and I'm working with Daoud. Um, and it's just automatically like, we're just back in it and trusting each other and trusting yourself. This is what I was talking about earlier, like trusting the process, trusting yourself and knowing that you know what you're doing. As long as you've put in the time to know what you're doing. If you're not where I am yet, like, knowing that you have to put in the time, being ready, being patient. Like I have a lot of friends that aren't here yet. Talk to me about like, I want to be here already. And it's like, you, 
you'll get there. You know what I'm saying? Just keep working on it. Um, but I think that, I think that those, I think that, uh, writing, writing writer's block and stuff is kind of real. And it's just something that you kind of got to, sometimes you just kind of be like, I'm going to make stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just have fun. The focus should be have fun and learn if that's what you want to do and you can get there. You know what I'm saying? Let's take a few more. Uh, Jacob, what was the most awkward moment in a studio session? Oh man. That's like too much for me to figure out. Cause I've been in the studio with so many different people. I don't even know. Uh, one of the funniest moments that comes to mind is when, what was black Jupiter was dropping or something. And we were, we were making, you can't sit with us. Was it Black Jupiter? One of Smino's albums was dropping and we were making You Can't Sit With Us and he was just at the studio like turning up with us. He was just, he was drinking Ace of Spades. He was getting drunk and we we made Bad Boys that night. I was like, I was like, someone go get Smino and pull him in here and he's going to record right now. <laughs> and he was just like, that was a funny time. I don't know. Awkward. I don't even remember. I don't know, dude. I don't remember the awkward times. David Polk. How does Snacks Pivot get in touch with you for a beat? Dude, Snacks Pivot, Snacks Pivot got my number, dude. Come on now. Snacks Pivot hit me up. He can hit me up right now. <laughs> I heard he's been making cool songs, dude. I heard he's been making the good stuff. I heard I saw a video he made and it was fired. Everyone check out Snacks Pivot. Well, I guess he doesn't. He's not on the internet yet. So I was a little cousin. His kids can be fired. I'll tell you one thing. He's definitely gonna be fired. If anyone got any more questions, I got time for like one more probably. Um, but in general, you know, what I'm saying we talked about all these things. I will come back to what I was originally saying, which is that try to remember that you are not your idea. If you're making beats, if you're showing people things, be ready for constructive criticism. You know what I'm saying? Be ready for people to tell you things that they think, or, um, and just be ready to learn from anything. I had a friend of mine, Brian in college, tell me something where we would play marimba for each other. Uh, and other people in the studio would play stuff for each other and we would listen to each other. And he was always like, dude, if you listen to someone and they do something really bad, you just learn something not to do. And that stuck with me for a while. I think that's really cool because you can learn from anything. You can learn stuff from everything. And if someone does something that you don't like or some, or even someone gives you feedback that you will maybe strongly disagree with, it's okay to have your own subjective opinions. I'm not saying let go of your own likes and dislikes, but like be ready for unlearning. Be ready for being open to telling yourself that you're bad, telling yourself that you need to be better, telling yourself that you're good. Telling yourself that this is really tight. Like all these things are good, but just being really open and knowing that coming back to that, you are not your idea. Like if someone told, if someone tells me that I could change this kick, this Kehlani song, like if someone had said that to me, I'd be like, let me see. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to do it. Like sometimes with Saba, I'll be like, dude, like maybe try another, this verse is tight, but like, what if you tried making another verse? Like what would happen? You know what I'm saying? It might not be as good, but at least we tried and saw what happened and we already have a good verse. You know what I'm saying? It's always good to try things. You're not your idea. Try recording your own sounds, picking cool sounds. All these things are important things. And uh, just, you know what I'm saying? Try to have fun with everything and don't get too stuck in structuring and EQing and stuff while you're creating. You know what I'm saying? But I'm Daddy Pivot. This is, uh, we're here with John Wall Foundation doing the music production workshop. If anyone got any other questions, you can DM me, Daddy Pivot on IG, Daddy Pivot on Twitter, and follow Pivot Gang, follow John Wall Foundation. Uh, we're trying to help everyone out with stuff in Chicago. And um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Good to see you.